So with music then, music is the jackpot because we know that music engages how what we know, how we feel, uh, how we move, and it combines information from our other senses. It does that really, really well. This is what the hearing brain does, and music really is the jackpot. Um, so if we measure now the brain's response in musicians, by musicians, I'm not talking about professional musicians, I'm talking about um, you know, people who regularly play a musical instrument, a kid in band. Um, Importantly, there are certain ingredients in sound that are strengthened when you play a musical instrument, and voice counts. Um, and these are the FM sweeps, the harmonics, and certain aspects of timing. These are hugely important for making sense of the consonants and vowels that I'm producing right now, especially if it's in a noisy place. And um, the, the, the harmonics, the harmonics is what, what, what enables us to tell a flute and a piano apart. They're playing the same note, but they sound different. It's the harmonics, it's the timbre. And so the musician's signature is this. Interestingly, the language signature is the same. So music strengthens the sound ingredients that are important for language. Kids with language disorders have uh, their faders turned down on one or more of these ingredients. Rhythm is a really important part of music, obviously, but you probably don't realize how important it is for language. And in my lab, we study the same kids who are doing rhythm tasks, and we measure their brain's response to sound, and we find that kids who are good at, for example, following a beat, have rhythmic responses to sound, this is their brain responses, and it is the kids who have these rhythmic responses to the rhythms in sound who also have better language skills. Um, and so music is a wonderful way to strengthen rhythm skills, obviously for music, but did you think about how important it is for s strengthening your language abilities, especially following conversations in noise? It's the rhythm of speech that helps you fill in the gaps when you are listening in a, ch in a challenging environment. And so we studied kids in schools. We paired the kids. We had two groups um, that we matched in every way we could with their, um, their IQ and reading skills, et cetera. And one group got music in schools and the other uh, had another enrichment activity, and then we measured the brain's response to sound. And uh, this happened in elementary schools and in high schools in LA and in Chicago. And these were all in uh, low-income areas. And it turns out that um, one of the signatures of living in poverty is linguistic deprivation that seems to be tied with maternal education. Um, and one of the things that, um, that we did, so these are some of the kids in, in, in our studies. Um, what, one of the, uh, the things that we did, first of all, is we looked at reading scores in these low income areas and found that typically there is this achievement gap where reading scores get worse over time. Um, but the kids in these low income areas who played music maintained their age appropriate reading scores. The same is true for listening to speech and noise. After one year, we didn't see a difference between the groups, but after two years of making music, there was a difference. Um, and we can see it in, just automatically, objectively, in the brain's response to sound. In someone who makes music, you can see a strong response to sound in quiet, in a favorable listening environment, and this is in a noisy environment. Whereas the non-musician, you have a nice response when it's quiet and it's an easy listening environment. When it gets tough, the non-musician really takes a hit. So, um, you know, we have this signature for poverty and linguistic deprivation, which involves the harmonics, the timing, and how stable the response is over time. You know, if the kid is hearing, you say the same word and he's hearing it differently each time, how was how he to learn? Um, and we found that, so these ingredients are reduced and the neural noise is high, but music can partially offset this. It doesn't change the neural noise, but it strengthens the ingredients, the sound processing. With music then, music is the jackpot.